Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're just—I well, I am offended. Hey, I know you are. I can <laughs> tell. You. So I set I set it up. Ted Cruz. I mean, and the and I said I gave you the the, the excellent false choice gotcha uh, uh, dilemma. There is Ted Cruz competent or a liar? But I mean, but I I think he's got some serious questions to answer about some of his campaign's tactics, especially if he's going to run on this virtuous moral high ground that he's been preaching for a year. Well, I. I'm 100% with you on this. I, you know, the the bottom line is is well, is he immoral? I don't think so. We've talked before on this show about how a lot of times the staff starts running the candidate. The staff will start running the senator. Because the senator is out having a good time doing what he does, which is basically shaking hands and collecting money, right? That's what politicians do. The problem is is if you start losing control of your staff, you start looking like a bonehead. And I believe this is what happened to Cruz. Um, we go back to a Hanlon's razor kind of thing. I think that this, I think that what they did was malicious in the first place to, to uh, Ben Carson. We both met Ben. He's yep. a pretty thoughtful guy. Yep. Super nice guy. Super nice. So what you saw is a an article that said he flew back or a CNN post. Oh, that Ben Carson flew back to South Carolina for a change of clothes. Well, hold on. One, he just didn't go back for a change of clothes. There's probably a reason he went back. He probably had a fundraiser. He's probably trying to coordinate something, right? So he flies down there, takes care of it, and then flies back. Well, they all make an assumption. And, you know, everybody knows what happens when you assume. So they make this assumption. His um, uh, director of – his can't, not uh, – His media his director. Media yeah. director yep. goes, well, hey, looks like he's going to drop out. Well, I don't think he was going to drop out, and I think that they ran with it, and I think they looped King into doing it, which, now, you and I both know King is very astute. You've been complimentary of King, even though you disagree with him. How do you get a guy like King sucked into that so he's repeating that crap? So now... You got King, Representative oh. Steve King, with oh, a big as, batch and, of egg on his face. Well, it, it does, and I'll just tell you, as smart as Steve King is about his issues, about his policy positions, and, and about farmers and, and the things that he's really, and ethanol and things that he's really into, he is not, he is he is supremely vulnerable to sound bites and going after people. So, well, and that's true. And that's, and Ted Cruz is too. That's where this all stems from, but go ahead. So... Fast forward a little bit. There's a lot of controversy. Ted Cruz says, oh, geez, we misunderstood, blah, blah, blah. I don't think it had an impact on Carson's on Carson's numbers. I don't think it had an impact on Cruz's numbers. Um, and so then after that, Cruz and Rubio start going at it tooth and nail, which doesn't ha- hasn't impacted either one of them's another numbers. Everything's static. And the problem is, as long as everything remains static, Trump is going to be the nominee. We're going to have a brokered convention. And, uh, you know, a couple of smart guys that, that agree with me that it would have been Bush is now going to be a Rubio kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they, they're they having a meeting, Cruz and Carson, in a closet, apparently, for about a half hour, where Cruz is trying to explain why he's a, why he did what he did, that he's trying to apologize. He's probably trying to get um, Carson to drop out and throw his support behind him. And they're trying to make a deal. This goes on for, you know, a half hour. And then, because, because it's, the meeting has gone on so long, Carson is late getting up for his speech and doesn't get nearly the time he would have gotten. So, do you think Cruz did that on purpose? Well, no, but it looks pretty shifty. And then, you got what you just described. Yep. Yeah. Now... Now, Cruz has to let his campaign as media director go. Did, did Cruz have an idea what was going on? Probably not. Did he have? Did he approve of this? He probably said, well, yeah, that looks good in passing. And the problem is, is his, camp, his media director went with it. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it certainly makes him look bad. Uh, it's guilt. Remember Dave Funk? Mm-hmm. Right. Dave always said, and a lot of the people say, too, you can judge a man by the people surround himself with. Well, he surrounded himself with a guy who cost him a lot of goodwill points. And now these people are not talking about Cruz being the good guy and and leading the charge of family values and the rest of it. You have him leading the charge of suddenly, well, he's a constitutionalist. To the average voter, they don't even know what the Constitution is. Hell, they couldn't even tell you the Bill of Rights versus the Constitution. They couldn't do any of that. 
So saying you're a constitutionalist might engender you to the Tea Party, but it does not get you what you need. So the bottom line for me, I think Ted Cruz is letting his campaign run him, and now he has to stop, take a step back, and start moving forward again and reorganize. I think that's what he has to do. Rubio, for his part, if he just shuts up, spouts off what he wants to spout off and doesn't attack Cruz or Trump, I think he's going to be a lot better off. Well, I guess I just I'm curious as to why, after everything that we've seen about Ted Cruz, the things that he's willing to do, the things that he's willing to say, the the stuff that he's willing to do and say about his own leadership and his own party, why does he get the benefit of the doubt from you as far as being a ruthless campaigner? That's what well, I don't understand. Well, so, there's there's a difference between a ruthless campaigner which is what he is, and so is Hillary, so is yeah, Bernie. Yeah, I, I was about to make that same comparison. They, they, they Hillary doesn't get the same benefit of the doubt. Well, Remember the stuff about with Barack Obama? Yeah. She, well, she, was pegged, she was pegged as doing dirty stuff when there was really no evidence in the same kind well, because of Because she was instance. also attached to Bill. I mean, you have a much longer history with Hillary being kind of shady. And the part of the problem is, is Cruz is a ruthless campaigner. But the problem is, is there's these things are so sophomoric, are so idiotic, and so poorly done that I cannot believe a slick operator like Ted Cruz would actually approve of any of this stuff. Uh, I mean, there's always plausible deniability. To me, it goes, but it doesn't smack of stuff that Cruz would do. To me, it goes straight to the heart of what Cruz is he's a ta- he's a take no prisoners no nonsense guy that's what he campaigned on and won in Iowa on that he's a guy that stands up for what he does and will do anything that he needs to to get his point of view across including fake filibuster stuff that has no effect on anything so to me it goes exactly it's completely consistent now the issue now but it doesn't help his base. That no, fake I know. filibuster helped his base. No, helped his base. No, this the tight tea party His base guy. doesn't care about this stuff. That's my whole point. Yeah, that's why it makes me think that it's his campaign that's running him now, that he's lost control of it. I'm not saying that he's some innocent flower running around. I'm not saying he, he's not full of dirty tricks, because they all are. Let's just be mm-hmm. free and admit it. But I think it's gotten away from him. I think his campaign has gotten away from him. And I think there's people in his campaign doing and saying things that are reflecting badly on him that he can't control at this what point. Do, well, then what does he need to do to exert some control over his campaign? I mean, he's the candidate. Well, it's, it, his, it's his campaign. Absolutely. Well, he did the first step. He fired his, his media director. Mm-hmm. Second step is he needs to go find a good one. Uh, the state of Iowa has several good media directors. Tim Albrecht is one that I would suggest. Um, there's uh, uh, Will Rogers, you know. We like him. Uh, yeah, Will Rogers. I mean, that guy's excellent. Uh, he'd be great in the, uh, as a Ted Cruz campaign uh, media manager. Um, he needs to start firing some of these guys that do these sophomore hijinks. Because, not. I mean, if you can tell that it's Photoshopped, obviously it's low quality. If you're going to do dirty, underhanded stuff, at least make sure you're using quality stuff. That's just what I'm going to say. So, the other thing is, is, you know, taking shots at the establishment is a far cry from open, personal sabotage of the other candidates, which is not something that, in general, he engages in. And that's what makes me think, just from just from his style, I think he's lost control. So, he, like I said, he needs to take a step back, reorganize his campaign, start shoving ahead as hard as he can. Um, I would start talking to, to Carson and uh, the other people that are still in the race, talking about, hey, listen, can you join me? Is there a way we can make a deal? Is there a way we can start all getting together and pulling forward with the same cart? I think mean, that's what they ought to do. So, well, when we get back after the the break, we should probably uh, switch over to the other side of the aisle. Oh, that that sounds good. We'll be talking about the Democrats and their foibles. When we get back, we've focused for an entire hour on the show, and I'm sitting here thinking, how much fun have we had in this last hour, half hour? Oh, more fun uh, than you could count. And how much more fun are we going to have in the next half hour? Uh, uh, a lot more fun. We'll see. But, well, because I get it. Because you just got done dinging my guys. I'm going <laughs> to ding your guys now. All right. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll be back right after break. We couldn't do what we do without you. Thanks for tuning